lip gloss is just not one of those categories that I'm very picky about. As long as it doesn't smell weird and it doesn't feel overly sticky, I can dig it, which is why I have about 200 plus lip glosses right now, which is crazy. And that means I'm gonna to have to be a little strategic when it comes to getting rid of it. First of all, I'm going to get rid of anything that I have that is still sealed, meaning it can still be passed on to somebody without worrying about you know, contamination. I'm gonna start with these Maybelline, the elixirs. I have a few that I have open that I've tried, so I'm gonna keep those, but these are gonna get passed on. Same with these Milani lip glosses, which I'm sure are very nice, but it's just not worth it for me to keep them right now. Then I'm going to do the same for anything that I know for a fact is too old, it just smells funky or I've just had it in my collection for longer probably than I should have. So all these guys are just going to go straight to the trash. This one makes me sad because the brand doesn't even exist anymore, but then that gives you a good idea of just how old it is. Then I have a few lip glosses that came as part of sets or kits, and since they're not ones I picked out specifically, I never ended up using them, so they're gonna get passed on as well. These next glosses are nice, but they just don't really do it for me either because I have similar colors and textures and formulas that I like better. Or in the case of the Clarins ones here, I don't like the applicator. There are the little plastic nibs and I find those kind of annoying to use. So all of these are gonna get passed on to my mom. And now these are the glosses that I'm going to be keeping. I'm going to do some swatches along the way so you can sort of see how they apply. These Makeup Forever glosses have a beautiful sparkle. They remind me a bit of the Dazzle glosses from MAC. And I really enjoy the lightweight texture of the elixirs. And then the packaging on these just looks like it belongs on Black Widow's tool belt. And pretty purple lilac duochrome. These Lise Watier glosses feel really nice on the lips and they have a nice level of opacity, but the best part is this cute little light so you can apply your lip gloss at any time of the day or night. Marc Jacobs has one of my favorite lip gloss formulations. It just goes on so smoothly and feels so nice on the lips. I'm not generally a fan of plumping lip glosses, but I do like these buxom ones because I find the effect is a lot more natural and just kind of smoothing. This is just a really classic nude gloss. Everybody needs one and this one smells like cake. These NARS glosses have the world's tiniest brush, which makes it a bit of a pain in the butt to use, but they are very flattering. This color kind of looks a bit nuts, but it actually totally works over like a brown nude lip. Kind of a punk 90s grunge mashup. You're not going to be able to tell from the swatch, but this has beautiful duochromy sparkles. NYX is probably my favorite drugstore brand for lip glosses. They're comfortable to wear, the color range is great, the pigmentation is good, and they're inexpensive. The two other drugstore brands that I really like are Milani and Annabelle. They both offer not quite as much of a range of colors as NYX, but still a good selection. They feel comfortable to wear, they're inexpensive, and they have uh, cruelty-free status for both brands. And then these lip lockers, these Oat Flash glosses, are insanely pigmented. I've only kept one Stila lip gloss and it's this one because it legit feels like silk on the lips. Beautiful texture. 
The MAC Dazzle glasses obviously have the most beautiful reflective shimmer. These lip lacquers are also ridiculously pigmented. I'm gonna to have to swatch two just to show you. And I actually prefer a lip gloss like this to a liquid lipstick because I don't necessarily care about it wearing for very long. I just want something with a lot of intensity. I'm pretty sure it was Spectra.net that started my lip gloss obsession. I ended up collecting them like Pokemon basically. So all of these high-end lip glosses that I'm going to show you next are undeniably beautiful. They're gorgeous colors, the packaging is stunning, but ultimately it's lip gloss and I don't think they're any better than the less expensive glosses that I have in my collection. While I will definitely be keeping them, I don't think I would be purchasing these kinds of glosses going forward even if they were cruelty free. So as I swatch these next three glosses, you're probably going to think I'm nuts because they all look basically clear, but they all have a slightly different reflective shimmer that kind of picks up more when it's layered over a lipstick. This is hands down the most beautiful lilac gloss I've ever seen. I haven't actually even tried these Smashbox lip glosses, so I'm going to keep them to do that. And if you can say anything about Anna Sui is she nails the packaging. I also pulled out some of the glosses that I know are a bit older to try to work through them first, kind of like a weekly basket. These Clarins Lip Perfectors are almost kind of balmy in texture. They feel incredible on the lips and they smell like vanilla cupcakes. These Cora's uh, full color glosses are indeed full color, very opaque, and Armor Beauty is one of those indie brands that's available on Beautylish. Amazing pigmentation. So at the end of it, these are the ones that I'm going to either throw out, pass on, or try to sell, and then these are all the ones that I'm keeping. And this is how I organized everything that's left. I just used trays and ice cube trays and baskets from the dollar store.